For the following video, we're going to solve some absolute value equation problems here. So the instructions for this one say to solve the absolute value equations, and then for each equation, add the sum of your solutions. So it seems like we're going to be getting more than one solution for each problem, and once we solve it and got our final answer in the end, we're then going to add those solutions up together to get this final solution. So when it comes to approaching absolute value equations here, there are a couple of rules that you need to be aware of in order to solve those problems. And it really depends on the style of absolute value problem. It really depends on how it's set up. For example, A, we have the absolute value of 8x minus 3 minus 12 is equal to 4. This is going to coincide to an absolute value equation set up in the following form, where you have an absolute value on one side of the equation, and then it's set equal to a constant. And the rule for this tells us what we're going to do is we're going to create two equations based off of this one. We're going to take the absolute value on the left, and we're going to set it equal to the positive constant. And then we're going to create a second equation where we take the absolute value on the left, and then we're going to set it equal to the negative constant that's given there. When it comes to absolute value equations, you're always going to end up splitting the equation up into two separate equations and solving those two equations and getting a solution for each one of them. So, for example, A, this is the one that we need to do. So this is what it's going to look like. First, we need to get the absolute value completely by itself on one side of the equation. We almost have that here. The only thing going on is we have this minus 12. So I'm going to kick that 12 over to the other side by adding it to both sides. So that it cancels on the left, it leaves me with the absolute value of 8x minus 3 is equal to 16. So now that I have the absolute value completely by itself on one side and it's set equal to my constant, I'm now going to use this rule here that allows me to split it up into two different equations, and that's what this is going to look like here. So I'm going to take the absolute value, 8x minus 3, set it equal to the positive 16, and then I'm going to take the same absolute value, 8x minus 3, and I'm going to set it equal to negative 16. So it's just the positive and negative version of what it's set equal to. The left side with the absolute value is always going to stay the same. So it's x, 8x minus 3 equal to 16, and then negative 16. Solve these two equations. I would start by adding 3 on both sides to get 8x is equal to 19. And then dividing 8 out on both sides gives me that x is equal to 19 over 8. Do the same thing with our other equation, add 3 on both sides. That's going to cancel on the left, leaving me with 8x is equal to a negative 13 there. And dividing out the coefficient on both sides gives us that x is equal to a negative 13 eighths. So these are our two solutions for this absolute value problem. Do keep in mind for this particular question, it's asking us to find the sum of the solutions. So it wants us to add our answers together. 19 over 8 plus negative 13 over 8 is going to equal to, well, 19 plus negative 13 is 6 over 8. And once we simplify that, we get 3 fourths here in the end for the solution when we add those two together. Okay. Moving on to example B. Example B, I see that I have an absolute value on either side of the equation. So I have absolute value of 5x plus 4 is equal to the absolute value of x plus 9. So the formula that we're going to use for this particular setup here is we're going to take the absolute value of the left side. So that's going to be here, the absolute value of ax plus b is going to equal to the positive and negative version of the right-hand side, which I'm going to represent by CX plus D there. So that just represents the right-hand side. And just give me a second here. I just realized that you can't see that. So that's a positive or negative of CX plus D, just like that. 
So what this is actually saying here is we're going to take the first equation, which is 5x plus 4, set it equal to the positive version of the right-hand side, so what I consider the normal version. Exactly as it looks, 5x plus 4 is equal to x plus 9. That's your first equation. Your second equation, the left side still stays the same, 5x plus 4, but now it's going to be set equal to the negative of the right-hand side. So that's going to be, if we add a negative in here to the right-hand side of the equation and we distribute that negative to everything, what is that going to look like? That's what the right-hand side is over here. That would look like a negative x and a negative 9. Right, so the left hand always stays the same, 5x plus 4, 5x plus 4. The right hand side, for the first equation, it's normal. For the second equation, take the opposite of it. And that's your two equations for this kind of setup where you have an absolute value on either side. Otherwise, work on solving these equations. I'm going to start by subtracting x on both sides. That's going to cancel it from the right hand side, giving me 5x minus x. Uh, to get 4x on the left hand side, drop down the rest of the problem. Since I kicked my variables over to the left hand side, I'm going to move my numbers over to the right, so I'm going to do the opposite and subtract 4 on both sides. That will cancel it on the left, giving me 4x is equal to 5. And then dividing out our coefficient here in the end, we get x is equal to a 5 fourths. Solving our other equation, so I'm also going to start by adding x to both sides. That's going to cancel it on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, 5x plus x gives us 6x. Drop down the rest of the problem. Since I move my numbers to the left, I mean, since I move my variables to the left, that means I'm moving my numbers to the right. So that means I need to subtract 4 on both sides. To get 6x is equal to a negative 13. And dividing out the coefficient, so that gives me that x is equal to a negative 13, 6. So these two here are our solutions for this absolute value problem. But again, with this particular problem, it wants us to find the sum of our solutions. So it wants us to take 5 fourths plus negative 13 6. And we want to add these two together. Remember, in order to add or subtract fractions, you need to have common denominators common denominators of 4 and 6 is a 12. So real quickly here, I know that 4 goes into 12 3 times, so this one I need to multiply by 3 over 3. This fraction, 6 goes into 12 2 times, so we would then multiply by 2 over 2. That's then going to give me the fractions 15 over 12 plus negative 26 over 12. And when we add those two fractions together, we get negative 11 over 12 as our final answer when we add those two together. Otherwise, that's it for this problem.